Thanks everyone for being here. I'm really excited today to present uh, this new package, Majoko.jl. And this was some work I did with a colleague, uh, Nick Barber, at the University of Sydney. So those of you who might not know what Majoko is, so I'll just spend uh, a few seconds uh, explaining it. So Majoko is a physics uh, sort of simulation engine. It also has a lot of tools built in for doing visualization as well. And its sort of primary focus is developing applications in robotics uh, and for machine learning, particularly reinforcement learning. So Majoko is a pretty old project. It happened uh, before um, we made the bindings for, for Julia. It's about 12 years old now, but it was recently bought by Google DeepMind. Uh, and they actually open sourced the project, um, which really helps us in, in making uh, the bindings. And the reason we actually did this is because both Nick and I believe that Julia is a really good language for doing this sort of um, robotics and also reinforcement learning research because you can really get at the high performance and you can be really productive and iterate quickly on your ideas. Now, uh, what do we do with Majoko.jl? So what we do is we build the uh, Majoko C library and we export the bindings into Julia and sort of make it quite ergonomic to use uh, within Julia itself. And some of the work that Nick did was introducing a, uh, a visualizer so that you can sort of develop your algorithm and, and see the results and play around uh, in the visualization. Uh, now we have to say there was a group called Lyceum that did a lot of this work um, sort of uh, many, many years ago, and it's, it's no longer maintained, but their visualizer, the, uh, a lot of our code is directly based on, on their old code. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, start a REPL session, because this is uh, sort of the best way to show off the package. Um, so the package is um, used like any other. You would install it uh, with the standard Julia package manager. And if we want to visualize an object, what we have to do to start with is to load a model. Uh, and so the way we do that is with the load model function. And uh, we load a, a specification. So Majoko environments are written in uh, an XML specification that's all documented on their website. So what I'm loading is a, a Cartpole model, which I will show in a visualizer in a second. So to actually run the visualization, we need an object to store all of the simulation data, like the positions and the velocities, um, uh, which we create with this init data uh, function. And now for the visualization, uh, we don't install the visualizer by default on your system, just in case you don't want a, uh, a huge number of dependencies. Um, so instead, we have it in a package extension, and you need to call this function to be able to access uh, the visualizer. So the way that we call the visualizer is just call model and uh, just call the visualize function with a, a bang on the end, and this will launch an OpenGL window where you can play around uh, with uh, the visualization. And uh, this is fully. Let me just launch that again. Uh, this is uh, fully interactive, so you can go around in the 3D environment. And you can add forces to the bodies inside to see how uh, they will react. Obviously, this uh, doesn't do anything uh, for now. But what we'll do is write a very quick controller to uh, move this green body to balance the pole vertically. And we'll do that next. So the reason why Visualize has a bang on the end is because it changes this data object. And you can inspect uh, something like the positions. Uh, and Instead of giving you like a pointer to an array, we, we wrap it in a sort of Julia array that follows the abstract uh, array interface. Uh, and if you didn't know what um, a property does, uh, we have the show docs function, uh, which can give you documentation for a specific property of the struct. Um, so this tells you it's just the position, and it tells you the dimensions of the array as well. Uh, so before we uh, get started, I'm just going to reset everything to the default values. And now if I check the key pause array again, it's reset everything to zero. And uh, to save a bit of time, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste a function in. If you want to follow more closely, this is a guide in the documentation as well. So we don't need to understand this function, uh, but I just want to point out a few key points. Uh, the model object is used. Um, just like you would a normal Julia struct, and you have access to all of the properties there. Um, you also have access to all of the functions inside Majoko itself. So this MJD transition function 
um, is exported by, by Majoko, but we've wrapped it to make it a bit more ergonomic uh, to use. Uh, one thing you will notice is we're initializing some arrays with this MJ zeros. This is basically just the zeros function, but it's a slightly different memory layout. I'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, so when I t say that we've um, sort of made it more er ergonomic, one of the things is adding documentation to all of the functions. So you can see that this is a finite difference method to calculate um, some, some derivatives. Um, and also, uh, we tell you the input arrays, um, sort of what type they expect, and also the sizes uh, as well, uh, because these can be quite difficult to find out if you have to trawl through the documentation all the time. So you have access to everything in the REPL. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll continue creating the controller. So we need this K object, it's basically kind of like a, a spring constant, like a restoring force to try and keep the cart uh, balanced. And to actually visualize this, we have to uh, write a controller, which is just a function that takes model and data as input arguments and sets the control property of the data struct. So we can call this uh, whatever we like. Uh, and inside, I'm going to construct the state by concatenating uh, the position vector and the velocity vector together. And then I'm going to directly broadcast into the array, the control array, which sets the actuators uh, uh, with this value. And if we want to actually test this controller, we can call the same command again, model data, and pass in a controller, which is just uh, the function that we've uh, defined. So now we're running, and the mode has changed to controller. Uh, if we click play, nothing happens. But now when we add a force, uh, the cart will balance itself uh, from there. So we hope that you can use like the REPL to um, sort of create your controllers and iteratively develop them, tweak your parameters, and directly see the results. Okay. Uh, as promised, I'll talk a little bit about why we use MJ0s. Uh, zeros. So under the hood, you're using uh, C functions. And they take uh, pointers to an array, which is linear in memory. Now, all of C and NumPy use row major indexing, which is a type of memory layout, whereas Julia uses column major. Uh, so if you have a linear array, it's actually mapped into different locations, even though they're the same sized arrays. Um, so what we do is we give you these two functions, MJ array and MJ0, so you can create an array in this uh, row major memory layout to pass into the your Majoko functions. Uh, but Julia is quite nice and smart, and the type system will uh, make you um, be able to access these row major arrays, just like any other Julia array. Uh, so on the Julia side, you don't need to worry what the memory layout is, but you have to worry when you're passing them into uh, these Majoko functions. So just quickly, I'll just go over the design philosophy. So we give you access to everything in the, the C library. There's over 300 functions here and lots of structs. And these structs have hundreds of properties. Um, so we think documentation is really important. How do you actually sort of navigate around? How do you know what to use? Um, so all the functions that we uh, provide have um, doc strings. And we also give you some extra functions like show docs to actually inspect what the properties are as well. Um, because if you want to actually have a look at the properties, the documentation for a struct is a few hundred lines long. So this makes it easier to, to narrow down on, on what you're interested in. Um, we also provide a bunch of validation checks as well. So um, the Majoko function we used in the previous example uh, has some guardrails to make sure that the arrays you pass in are the right size, uh, the right type, and also the right memory layout. And we'll give you warnings or errors to, to make sure uh, that you're doing everything correctly. Um, one thing that's really core to this is we want it to be used for robotics and reinforcement learning research, so making it high performance is really important. So uh, we don't copy anything across the language barriers. Uh, we just directly give you the views into the memory uh, itself as well. Uh, and we hope it's still pretty easy to use. And we have a lot of utility functions as well to make writing the code easier and, and cleaner, and you can find that in our documentation. Okay, with that, I want to uh, finish up, say a huge thanks to everyone that helped. We had a lot, of, um, very, uh, a lot of help from various people online giving us some pointers on how we actually did this. And I also need to thank uh, the Infinity Group at the University of Nottingham because they actually sponsored me to come here and talk to you.
uh, the QR code is for the slides in case I went a little bit fast in this talk, so you can access them afterwards. And it's also on the schedule as well. But yeah, that's everything. I'm happy to take any questions now or later.